Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. I think the mortise and tenon is probably the most common joint in woodworking. And while there's a strong argument for doing it with power tools, there will be that occasion when the task is beyond the reach of those machines and you'll want to have the skill to be able to do it by hand. Now I've been teaching this to folks for the past 10 years and what I found was that the saw was usually the weakest link in their ability to execute that joint properly. They typically would have very big teeth, a fair bit of set, wide plate, and it would simply be beyond the ability of the average part-time woodworker to control that saw and get the kind of results they've been looking for. What I did about a year ago is start to work on a better saw, one that would enable, as I said, the part-time woodworker to get the kind of control that he needed and yet still have the speed to execute that joint well and maybe even be able to join it right from the saw. I want to share with you the features that we came up with and give you a quick demonstration on how my new tenon saw works. The similar features to the dovetail saw are we use the same comfortable composite handle. We use the same method of attaching the blade to the brass back, which is with copper pins, so it's good and secure. And we fasten the handle to the saw with bolts that actually go through not only the handle and the blade, but the handle, the brass, and the blade. Good and secure, not going to come apart, and it really translates into good feedback when you're using the saw. Now, where do we differ? Well, we use saw plates that's a little bit heavier. Because of the extra size and depth of cut, we went with 25 thou saw plate versus the 20 we use in our dovetail saw. The saw itself is 12 inches long. It has two and three, two and three quarter inch depth of cut, which I feel is plenty for what I would call furniture grade or furniture size mortise and tenon joints. Now, the limiting factor on, the, on a, a tenon saw is typically the gullet or the size of the tooth, whichever way you want to look at it. Once that gullet fills up, <clears throat> when the saw is in the kerf, it can no longer cut. So you have to have a heavier tooth when making wider cuts. We went to 12 teeth per inch. A lot of saws are 10, even 8. Too aggressive usually for the guy who's only doing this occasionally. So with a 12 TPI, a little bit slower, but it allows you the control you're looking for. And speaking of control, up here in the front 2 inches, we went with 20 teeth per inch to give you that easy starting strip. We reduced the cutting angle on the tooth face from 0 degrees back to about minus 14, so it literally offers no sawing resistance. And we did something similar back here. Our cutting face on these big teeth went from 0 to minus 4, and again, it took away that grabbing feature, but it still gave you the speed of cut, but allowed you a lot more control. The saw is heavy, that works in your favor. We've reduced the set to just two thousandths of an inch per side, so it tracks beautifully, gives you a lovely finish, and you'll see that when I demonstrate. I'm going to grab a piece of hardwood, make a cut, and then we'll take it apart and have you let you have a look at it and see for yourself. Use that starter strip to get the cut, cut going. Most folks run into problems at the very beginning, where you don't have much kerf to guide the saw cut. Once the kerf gets started, it will take over and force that saw to cut nice and straight. So it's important that you aim and get off on the right foot. Use the full length of the blade. Sharpening will last longer. Now, let's go over to the bench hook and uh, use our crosscut saw to cut that cheek off and have a look at what kind of surface quality we have. Okay. Nice and smooth. Now there's the piece that came off. I'm going to flip it around so we can use that flat side to see what kind of a joint we'd have. And you can see from that 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 is certainly acceptable for a glue surface. It's nice and flat, nice and smooth, and the closer you can get to that kind of a finish, the faster and more efficient your joinery is going to be. If you like hand cut joinery and you need a good saw, if you visit our website www.robcosman.com our tenon saw comes with either what we call a ebony resin or a bone resin composite handle. We'd be happy to send one to you. You may also want to look into our crosscut saw. It'll give you that nice clean shoulder that you need on that tenon. Now I have a video that I did a few years ago entitled Hand Cut Mortise and Tenon. It's a two disc set. It walks you through what we might call the blind mortise and tenon as well as the more decorative and the stronger through wedge tenon. Either way, I hope you enjoy your time in the shop and I look forward to having you back in mind sometime soon.